Hey, what's up? This is video number three in the breakdown series on the Patreon page. Uh, today's video, we're going to look at one that got really requested on my Instagram page. And it's my take on a very common melody from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory called uh, Pure Imagination. So I'm going to play the clip now and as usual, tabs are down below and I'm just going to run through how to do it and hopefully get on with it. So here's the clip. So we're going to start with the basics, uh, the song's in E major, and the chord progression is a 4-3-6-1, meaning that you start on the fourth step in the scale, which is A obviously, so your first chord is an A major, then it goes down to a G sharp chord, then it goes to a C sharp chord, and then up to E. So the first chord we're talking about is an A major 9. You can see that in the tabs below, I'm just using this kind of fingering uh, because of the melody that I'm playing. And that's also why it becomes an A major 9. We'll get back to that in a second. The second chord is a G sharp 7 sharp 9. It's a bit of a mouthful, but it goes like this. With that sharp 9 on top. And then you go to the C sharp minor, which is just a C sharp minor 9. As you can see in the tabs below. These fingerings are just what I end up doing because of the melody that I'm playing, so it needs to be accessible, but most of them fit within the standard kind of way you'd play them anyway. So the fourth chord in the progression, obviously, is the E major. I'm playing that as a major 9 chord, and it goes like this. Just a bar chord on the 11th with that 12th round on the B. There's one more chord way at the end after all the four rounds, and that chord is an A flat major 9 which is undiatonic in, in the key. So that's just to move on to the next section of the song, the original melody, but I'm not playing that in the clip, obviously. So yeah, we're gonna have a little look at how the shape of the whole progression is. Uh, basically, how I look at it is four different parts. It has the same type of melody, uh, but slight things alter. So what happens first is that you have a main motif, which is kind of the main melody that we all remember, which is... <laughs> That's the main melody and we want to harmonize that with the chords that we just went through. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to slide up to that 11th fret, go to that 12th, and once you hit that 12th you're going to add the chord underneath. And you're going to do the same thing for the G sharp chord. And then after the G sharp chord you're going to get to a C sharp minor, this is C sharp minor 9, and the way that um, the melody fits that is that instead of going to the B, it goes to the D sharp, which makes the 9 in the C sharp minor chord. I'm doing that as a hammer on with that pinky. And you're gonna play that 12 11. So after you're on the C sharp minor, you're gonna do a slide one fret underneath the E major 9 shape and you're going to slide up into it because that's how I would have phrased the melody anyway. If I was playing the melody on your song, I would have gone... Add a little slide there just for extra phrasing. Why don't you just try and do that with a whole chord? And that's how you can start adding things to your playing in general. If you start adding more small slides and small little nuggets of kind of sliding up or down one fret or even just doing hammer-ons, you're gonna to start to see that your playing gets a lot more kind of, I guess, fluid. To me, in my ear, it's a bit more like a like a sax player would phrase it. It's like, like a single line. You gotta make it as elegant as possible, and that's kind of the inspiration I took in this in this progression as well. So that's your first round around the melody. That's what I call like part one. That's the main melody, and then you have kind of a alteration of that melody. We're gonna keep playing the same chords, but the melody now goes. <laughs> Gonna do some fun stuff with the chords to kind of fit around this. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna to go to the same A major chord, but you're not gonna include the nine on top. So you're just gonna go and just play the bottom bit of that A major chord. Then you're gonna play.
play the melody and it's time to go back to that G sharp. Now you're voicing it with a G sharp seven. Follow the melody back down. And this is where it gets interesting for me because you get to this D sharp and you have a C sharp minor chord. So obviously it's gonna be a C sharp minor nine. But here you have the freedom to start adding more notes and start kind of toying with it to see kind of where the limit is. So what I did is I took a B major chord, I put a C sharp in the bass, making it like a minor 11 chord. Now what I did with this chord is that I broke it up into kind of a phrase. So I would hold down the whole chord and the alteration of it would be a minor seven. By just barring down that ring finger. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna pluck the first three strings and then do it again, but now add your ring finger down on that ninth fret. And then you're gonna do it again, but now you're gonna include the B string as well. And keep putting that ring finger down. And then you're gonna do it one more time, but add the E string as well. So you're playing the whole chord the whole time. Just be very careful in your phrasing on the right hand so you don't start attacking it way too hard, you don't want it to sound like Like you want to go very light and gentle with it. And kind of build it up and add more and more notes. It sounds a bit like harmonies or a bit like you have more people doing stuff. It's actually just adding more notes to a chord you're already playing. Just be smart about what strings you're pucking so you don't give it all away at once. So that was the second round, and then you come to the third round, which is just a repeat of the first one. So the same melody as the original first round, same chords, it's all the same. Now you're starting your fourth round, which could be a repeat of the second round, making it like an A, B, A, B. But there's a slight change now. We're actually going to go to that A flat major 9 chord, and that's how we're going to end the progression. So you're going to start with the A major chord as you did in the second round. Go to the G sharp. But instead of going to the C sharp minor, now you're going to go to the A flat major 9. And the reason I go to that A flat is basically just because in the original song they go to a new key. So I figured I'd use that melody note to kind of just recolor it, give it another color. So given that D sharp, the fifth in the A major chord, instead of it being the ninth in the C sharp minor. Same note, different functionalities. So yeah, that's basically it. That's kind of a run through of the progression. Uh, just remember that when you're on the chords and they're ringing out, try and add a little bit of tremolo to it just so it floats a bit more. I obviously use my palm on the bridge to get a bit of a tremolo effect. If you have a whammy bar, go very easy on it. If you don't have any of those things, you can just kind of shake the neck a little bit as well if you want to. These are some nice techniques to just kind of create a bit more movement. But yeah, that's basically it. If you have any questions, pop them down below. I'll be responding to every single one. And if you learn this and film it, please share it with me. Please send it my way or tag me so I can see it because I really want to share it all on my story on Instagram. And yeah, as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.